feel like you've turned off a girl and blown your chances with her. Chances are you don't even notice, and never will unless you learn what uh, turns a girl off in the first place. Today, we're diving into the world of dating, into what turns off girls, into those mistakes you're probably making right now. And let's face it, you need to hear this. This is going to sting, but stick with me, and you might just turn things around. Chapter 1. Not Being Too Much of a Gentleman Guys, let's cut to the chase. We're here to talk about the little things, the tiny details that you might not think matter, but trust me, they do. It's the small stuff that speaks louder than any sweet talk you might spit out. First up, manners. Yeah, you heard me right. Basic, good old-fashioned manners. I'm not talking about the fancy stuff like knowing which fork to use at a fancy dinner. Nah, I'm talking about the real basic stuff like holding doors open, pulling out chairs, and offering to help when she's carrying something heavy. Now, before you start rolling your eyes and thinking, this is nonsense, just hear me out. These actions are a big deal. They show her you respect her and are willing to put her comfort before yours. And no, it's not about treating her like she's fragile or something. Women are tough, dude. They can handle their stuff, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't appreciate a little help every now and then. Chapter 2. Lying about small things. Alright, let's move on to the next big turnoff. And this one matters more than you might think, and it is lying. You think a little white lie every once in a while doesn't matter? Think again. Girls have a sixth sense for this stuff. They could sniff out a lie better than a bloodhound on a trail. So don't even try to play that game because you are gonna lose. Here's the thing about lying. It's not just about the lie itself. It's about trust. When you lie, you're betraying your trust. And <laughs> once that's gone, it's almost impossible to get back. And I'm not talking about big, life-altering lies. Even the little ones can lead to a destruction of trust over time. Like you said you were studying, but you were actually playing video games. Or you said you were stuck in traffic, but you just overslept. These little lies may seem harmless at first, but they add up. And sooner or later, she's going to start questioning everything you say. So if you want to keep a girl interested, don't give her any reason to doubt you. Be honest. Be upfront. And if you messed up, own up to it. If you don't want to do something, tell her straight. She'll appreciate your honesty a lot more than any pretty little lie you can come up with. Listen, by watching these videos, I know you aren't one of those losers who think they already know everything. Even if you've only watched one video on this channel, you still clicked on it, and that shows that you have a fire inside of you to start improving. You already showed the willpower. The only thing you need is a path. I've put down 10 modules which you can see as ladders. Every module or ladder will exactly explain to you step by step how to get to the top. From achieving peak masculinity, advanced testosterone optimization, getting women, mastering the game of exchanging value, to actual money-making methods, and even more. I have literally laid the groundwork for you to become jacked, attractive, rich, and of high social status. You don't lack motivation. You just lack the knowledge and trust in the path that you're taking. You can continue messing around in the never-ending cycle of taking paths that lead to nothing, or click the link in the description down below. Chapter 3. Being Clingy Being clingy. We've all been there. You meet someone amazing and you want to do everything together. You want to spend every single waking moment with them. You're texting them 24-7, you're showing up at all the places that they go to, you're dropping everything just to be with them. You think it's romantic, but let me tell you, from her perspective, that can be a nightmare. Let me break it down for you. Clinginess isn't about love or affection, it's about insecurity and control. It's you saying, I'm not complete without you, I need you to fill a void in me. And also, I need all your time so that other people aren't taking up your time. And trust me, that is a lot of pressure to put on a person. It's suffocating, and it's scary. She is her own person, with her own life, and she needs space to breathe, to be herself. If you're constantly crowding her, if you're constantly needing her attention, she's going to feel trapped. And what do we do when we feel trapped? We escape, we run. So if you don't want her to run, give her space. Let her miss you. Let her have her own life, and have you focus on having yours. It's okay to be a part, to do your own things. In fact, it's, it's healthy. It shows that you're secure in yourself and in the relationship. 
It shows that you trust her. Chapter 4. Lack of Ambition Look, you don't gotta be a millionaire or a CEO to be seen as ambitious. It's more about your attitude towards life. Are you the guy who's content with a dead-end job, spending his days gaming, or aimlessly wandering through his life? Or are you the guy who's always striving, learning, growing, working towards being better? Guess which one the girls prefer? See, ambition isn't just about money or career. It's a reflection of your character. It says that you're motivated, you're determined and focused. You're not just content to float along, you want to make a mark, make a difference. If she shows you've got drive, that's good. Drive is sexy. When you lack ambition, you're basically saying, I'm okay being mediocre. And believe me, mediocrity is a big, oh, it's the biggest turnoff there is. Makes you look lazy, uninteresting, uh, uh, unreliable. No girl wants to attach herself to a sinking ship. Chapter 5. Not taking care of your appearance. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you gotta be a fashion model or spend hours preening in front of the mirror. But you do gotta take basic care of yourself. You know, things like regular showers, clean clothes, decent haircut. I mean, let's be honest, would you be attracted to a girl who didn't brush her teeth, didn't comb her hair, who wears stained, wrinkled clothes? I don't think so. Same goes for girls. Appearance matters, man. It's the first thing people notice about you. It's how you present yourself to the world. When you don't take care of your appearance, it's like saying, I don't care about myself, so why should you? Take some time each day to look after yourself. Brush your teeth, comb your hair, wear clean, fitting clothes. It doesn't take much, but it makes a huge difference. It shows that you respect yourself, and that makes others respect you too. And believe me, girls notice these things. They notice the guy who's clean, neat, takes pride in his appearance, makes you stand out, makes you attractive. It shows that you're a man who's got his act together, and trust me, that is a turn-on. Chapter 6. Eating like a pig. Sounds pretty simple, but you'd be surprised how many guys get it wrong. When you're at a restaurant or even just munching a sandwich at a park, remember that you are not alone in the forest, you are in public, you are being watched. Shoveling food into your mouth like you're in a hot dog eating contest? No. Talking with your mouth full? Hell no. Not using your napkin? Dude. These aren't just bad manners, they're signals to any girl around you that you have no respect for those around you. And let's be honest, it's gross. No one wants to sit opposite of someone who's munching, crunching, I'm, I'm, I'm slurping their way through a meal. It's not appetizing, it's not cute, and it's a major turnoff. So slow down, close your mouth, and remember your manners. Believe me, she'll thank you for it. Chapter 7. Not having diverse activities. Next up, not having diverse activities. You might be the world's biggest football fan, or you might spend every free moment gaming. That's cool, man. It's real cool. Everyone's got their passions, but is that all you do? If you don't have any other interests, any other activities, that's a problem. That's a big problem. You see, girls are attracted to guys who are interesting, who have a range of hobbies, who can talk about more than just one thing. When you have one interest, it makes you seem one-dimensional, predictable, even boring. And uh, it goes without saying, no girl wants to date a bore. Chapter 8. Being sad or depressed. Now on to the last habit, constantly being sad or depressed. Life's tough, sure. There will be ups and there will be downs. Moments of self-doubt and days where you feel like the whole world's against you, but listen up. It's crucial that you don't let these negative emotions become your identity. Constantly moping around, sharing sad posts on social media, going on and on and on and on and on about how hard everything is. It's just not attractive. It's draining. It sucks the life out of people around you. You think girls want to be with a guy who's always down in the dumps? Ah, they don't. They want somebody who's positive, somebody who can lift them up, and not pull them down. You can scoff, ignore it, continue on your merry way, or you can take it on board, use it as a wake-up call, start working on becoming a better version of you. Remember, nobody's perfect. We all have our flaws, our bad habits, but the difference between those who win and those who lose in the game of love and the game of life is the willingness to acknowledge these flaws and the determination to change. Chapter 1. Poor Grooming Habits Alright, let's cut to the chase. Poor grooming habits are more than just a superficial problem. They are a loud, 
glaring message about who you are, what you prioritize. When you don't take care of your appearance, it showcases a lack of self-respect. You might think that you're being casual, but it comes off as you don't care about even the most basic of self-care. If you show up smelling like yesterday's workout, it isn't just unpleasant, it is thoughtless. It's about signaling that you value the time and company of those around you. Think about it. She's made the effort to present her best self when you can't be bothered to do the same. Doesn't exactly scream equality or mutual respect. And then there's the maturity angle. Mature individuals understand the importance of cleanliness and presentation. You wouldn't be too happy if the girl that showed up to the date had unwashed hair and smelled awful, would you? That exact same thing applies to you. Now, before you start whining about, that's too much work, stop. This is basic. It's bare minimum. If you can't handle this, well, then you have many, many other things to reevaluate. Chapter 2. Neediness and Clinginess Let's get this one thing straight. Bombarding a woman with constant messages and clinging on to her like a lifeboat is like admitting that you don't have anything better to do. Neediness is not cute. It's cringeworthy. Thinking you're showing affection by becoming her shadow? No. It's just making you look desperate. Clinging on to someone is not a sign of love. It's a sign that you're missing something in your own life. No one wants to be the solution to your boredom. That's not the kind of puzzle piece that she's looking for. Here's the reality. Listen close. A woman wants to see that you have your own stuff going. You got your own stuff going on. Your own interests, friends, a life that doesn't revolve around her. It's not about playing hard to get. It's about showing that you're a whole package, not a half person looking for a sidekick. So instead of being her personal assistant, get a grip on your own life, have hobbies, hang out with your buddies, and let her have her own space too. A relationship should be a partnership, not a one-man show. Show her that you're secure and you're complete in yourself. That is what's truly attractive. Chapter 3. Arrogance and Self-Centeredness Alright, let's talk about something that's not winning you any points. Arrogance. Yeah, sure, confidence is cool, but if you're using every conversation as an opportunity to inflate your own ego, you are walking dangerous waters. Not a single soul that has lived or ever will live wants to listen to a self-absorbed monologue about your accomplishments, possessions, or how awesome you are. Seriously, you really think she wants to listen to that? Sure, if she asks directly about some particular achievements, go right ahead. But if that's all you can talk about to keep the conversation going, you're such a lost soul. She isn't taking you to the next stage. Here's the real deal. Genuine confidence doesn't need to shout. It doesn't need to constantly remind others of how great it is. It's, just, it's a classic thing of, uh, even Stephen Hawking says, the number one sign of unintelligence is somebody who boasts about their intelligence. It's a paraphrase, but it's about the point. It's about showing interest in her, you know, asking about her experiences, finding common ground to connect on. It's not a one-way street when you're the only one talking. And trust me, no one cares about how many fancy cars you own if you can't even hold a decent conversation. Chapter 4. Being too aggressive. Let's put it simply, aggression is a buzzkill. Pushing boundaries, invading personal space. These are actions that scream, run away, to any sense of a woman and they will run for the hills. Imagine somebody making you uncomfortable by getting all up in your grill or pushing you to do things that you're not comfortable with. Not a pleasant thought, right? Well, guess what? She's not into it either, bud. Being overly aggressive doesn't make you look assertive or dominant. It makes you look like a jerk who doesn't care about her feelings. So, get a grip. Focus on creating an atmosphere that's relaxed, enjoyable, respectful, Show that you can respect her boundaries and make her feel comfortable. No woman is going to want to spend time with you, let alone be with you, if she doesn't feel comfortable being around you in public. Chapter 5. Ignoring Boundaries Alright, let's set something straight right away. Boundaries matter. It's not just some buzzword. It is a fundamental aspect of treating someone with respect. And don't start frowning on that word. Respect. This deal is what gets you women worth having. Ignoring her boundaries is like slapping her in the face. Whether you're crowding her personal space, digging into topics she's not ready to discuss, or pressuring her into something she's not comfortable with, you are sending out vibes of insensitivity and zero consideration. Think about it this way. 
Well, you wouldn't have wanted someone stomping all over your emotional and physical space, would you? Well, guess what? She doesn't want that either. Crossing her boundary shows you're more interested in getting your way than in treating her like a human being with feelings. So, if you want to be more than just a blip on her radar, start paying attention to her signals. Listen when she talks, respect her personal space, and treat her feelings with care. It's about creating an atmosphere where she feels respected, understood, and valued. Not a single woman on this planet will stick around for someone who bulldozes over her comfort zones. Chapter 6. Oversharing Too Soon Time to talk about another common misstep. Oversharing. Look, I get it. Opening up is important. But here's the cold, hard truth. Unloading your emotional baggage on her within the first few interactions is a one-way ticket to making her feel overwhelmed and frankly weirded out. Imagine meeting someone for the first time and they're throwing their deepest traumas and struggles at you like they're tossing confetti. Yeah, it's not exactly the smoothest introduction, is it? Well, guess what? She feels the same way. Oversharing too soon is like dropping a mountain of emotional bricks on her and expecting her to juggle them. So, instead of unloading everything on her like you're auditioning for a reality show, take it slow. Build a connection. Get to know each other bit by bit and let that sharing evolve naturally. Yes, it's important to be vulnerable, but it is also crucial to give her space, to get to know you at a pace that's comfortable for both of you. Preferably, keep yourself more of a mystery. Don't reveal all your cards. The more she wants to know about you and the less she does know about you, the more attractive that you'll be to her. Chapter 7. Trying Too Hard You want her to notice you. I get it. But here's the truth. Constantly seeking her validation, showering her with gifts like some kind of love-struck Santa, or bending over backwards to be her personal doormat, you are going to be tossed into the eternal friend zone in a split second. And let's be honest here. Let's be brutally honest. It screams that you're about as confident as a scared puppy. When you're trying too hard, you're practically begging for validation and... Believe me, it shows. Oh, buddy, all oh, those poor women. This right there, that's about as attractive as a soggy piece of bread. Instead of throwing yourself at her feet, focus on being comfortable in your own skin. Confidence? Yeah, that's the real deal. Be authentic, be yourself, and let her see the person that you genuinely are. If you're genuine and you don't feel the need to beg for approval, she's more likely to be drawn to you like a moth to a flame. But if you're putting on a desperate show, well, don't be surprised if she's sprinting in the opposite direction. Authenticity. That is what you need to go after. Chapter 8. Being indecisive. You can't decide where you want to eat, what movie to watch, what shirt to wear. Oh, it's cute. For about five minutes. But being constantly indecisive is a straight-up romance killer. Let's break down why. First off, when you can't make a call on the small stuff, it screams a lack of confidence. Every shrug and mutter, I don't know, whatever you want. What she's hearing is, I can't handle making a decision. And while compromise is key in any relationship, if you're constantly shirking the responsibility of choice, doesn't exactly exude charm or confidence. Also, if you can't make the tiny decisions, how is she supposed to trust you with the big ones? Your constant maybes don't just make you look insecure and unsure, they make you look unreliable. It's the emotional equivalent of being chronically late. Sure, it's a small thing, but over time, those little hesitations and delays stack up, turning your indecisiveness into a big, looming question mark over your reliability. And it goes without saying, that's a turnoff. Both short-term on a first date, or before one, or long-term in a relationship, by avoiding these mistakes, you're not only increasing your chances of getting her attention, but also showing her that you're a man who respects and understands her boundaries, values, and desires. So get out there, tiger. Do me proud.